Okay, I've put the EverReady radio on my workbench. I'm going to take it apart and, and try to do an analysis. I might even try to slowly power it up as this, this cord is actually in very good condition just to see if anything uh, smokes. Uh, I'll bring the power up slowly, but I'm going to primarily open it up to see what parts uh, I need to order for it. I already know what capacitors are in it from the schematic. But the reason I put this up on the bench now, you know, if anybody's watched my videos, you know that I've got a lot of part one videos and, <laughs> and not part two uh, videos following. I think the last project I totally finished was my orthophonic Victrola. But the reason that this is on the bench now is because I have to order parts for a client for to repair his guitar amp. And the place that I'm going to order those parts from has a lot of the parts that I use in radios like this. So is if I'm going to place a parts order, I might as well get the parts ordered for this right away. And, uh, and try to make this a done deal uh, before too long. Here's something interesting. Um, here we have a splice. Now the plug, as you know, unfortunately, I, I think this plug was intact when I saw the picture of it on eBay. But uh, it got crunched uh, in, in packaging and shipping. That's okay. Uh, they make uh, reproduction ones, and I actually have uh, several original plugs like it around here uh, somewhere um, in fact here's one up on my here's a, a an original plug that I could use it's not the same style that's on there but uh, it's an antique plug but the interesting thing here is this cord the original cord is brown and this cord is black so for some reason they they added this on, they spliced this on. Uh, maybe they needed the cord to be just a little bit longer. That's about a foot and a half. I don't know. But I'm going to take it apart and see what we got to work with. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to get this radio done sooner than later. One thing I want to point out, I've never taken one of these apart. <laughs> Obviously, I've never seen one of these radios before, but, you know, the, the top part comes off quite easily, which makes taking the radio out of the, the base a lot easier. One thing, I w a couple things I want to point out at this stage. This tuning wheel, which works actually quite well, um, is made out of pot metal. And it looks like it's beginning to disintegrate. Uh, possibly one day that will disintegrate enough to where it'll fall apart and be unusable. That doesn't mean that the radio won't play. It's just that you won't be able to tune the radio with the tuning knob anymore. Um, I have no idea how to remanufacture one of those. <laughs> Maybe there's some truly expert radio and TV restorers who do, uh, like maybe Bob Anderson of B. Anderson TV. I don't know, but at any event, I have no idea if that ever breaks. I have to be very careful if this pot metal wheel breaks. Um, I'm in a world of hurt with uh, being able to tune the radio from the front. A friend of mine said that when the radio heats up it may start cracking that I don't know maybe it will maybe it won't but that's something I want to point out the other thing I want to point out is right here these two tube sockets are clearly marked 171's and that's what they are on the schematic the tubes I pulled out are number 26 tubes now I don't know uh, if 26 tubes are okay or not but it should have 171 tubes in it, so I may have to hunt out, hunt around for a pair of those. And I know from what I see on eBay that that's not very cheap. But this is where I'm at with this thing so far. 
I determined that the best way to get the the radio off of the base out of the base is to turn it upside down and take the base out off of it with it sitting upside down like it is. One of the things I have to be very, very careful of is not to bump this, which this is actually sticks up higher than this. So that's why I got this thing sitting on a couple of pieces of wood here. And of course, all kinds of dirt came out of it when I flipped it upside down. That's <laughs> pretty much normal. But I'm real trying to be very, very cautious of this pot metal tuning wheel here. Uh, I hope I don't break it. If I do, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to really <laughs> think of a way to fix that, but I don't know how I would do it. At any event, uh, here it is. It's sitting upside down, and I'm going to take all of the screws out of the base. Uh, I do notice that this thing seems to be in two halves. We have four screws here and four screws here. So I have no idea what I'm going to run into when I actually start taking this apart. So this is uh, uh, going to be an adventure for sure. have the base off of it. And the scary part is, is <laughs> there is nothing holding these two together. There must be a plug connection or, or a terminal connection in here somewhere that, uh, that I should have <clears throat> maybe undone before we get the light down in there. See that little box there? I think I should have opened that up. <clears throat> and undid a terminal strip in there before I took the base off of this thing. So the scary thing is, is these two pieces are now, <laughs> they're, they're loose. So I'm going to have to very carefully take, roll this off of these blocks and set it upright and undo that connection, <clears throat> which will be the, the next thing I do. And keeping in mind, I have to be careful not to break this pot metal wheel which I'm really worried is going to break. This is pot metal as well but this one looks in good condition. <clears throat> I've seen some pot metal items that are disintegrating completely and other ones that don't have a crack in them and other things I've worked on. Very strange how that pot metal is but there are let's see at least three uh, wire wound ohmite resistors one here, here, and here. The labels fell off, but uh, I know which resistors they go on. This resistor, I already know what it is. It's the uh, bypass of the field uh, coil. If you're using a speaker on this radio that doesn't have a field coil that would go in the power supply circuit, you flip the switch and it puts this resistor in the circuit and uh, uh, that's what this resistor for. These are, are, I have to look at the schematic to see what they specifically do, <clears throat> but I already know from the labels that came off which resistors they go on. Here's one, and I got another label behind it. So I already know that. And uh, <clears throat> it, it looks pretty good inside. I'm assuming this is a big capacitor in here. These transformers look a little, I don't know, they look a little, they're tarred, but I don't think they're burned. I think they're okay. Well, we'll see what we got to work with. Um, I'll have to just uh, wing it as I go along. But like I say, i got to carefully now get this thing <clears throat> uprighted so I can undo that terminal strip. So that's what I'm going to do. And here's the terminal strip in question. This is what I should have maybe undone before I took it out of the base. Live and learn. But I didn't damage anything. I managed to get this thing rotated. And I'm assuming that this comes apart by just taking these nuts off and then just separating the two pieces. So we have the power supply amplifier here and then the, the radio part, the tuning part here. So now it's time to separate it. And I have the two halves separated now. <clears throat> Five connections. 
these two terminal strips are just bolted together with these uh, brass nuts and bolts. We have uh, four uh, electrical voltage connections. I'll have to look at the schematic and this the center one is ground. Um, this is obviously ground. So anyways I have it separated now. Makes it a little bit easier. This part is pretty heavy. This part is a little bit lighter. I don't know if I'll be running this up uh, voltage wise at this stage of the game. I think I'm going to just do some electrical uh, tests with my meter and stuff to see what we've got. <clears throat> but um, I'll have to see if I can get a pair of 171A tubes for uh, this. I don't think 26 number 26 tubes are appropriate uh, to replace those with. That'll take a little bit of research. Uh, let's see, our, our number 80, our 280 goes here. So anyways, uh, here's the radio all apart. And I'll do some further electrical investigation. I've pulled the, the case off the top of the transformer can here. Uh, this is the case I pulled off. You can see it's quite rusty, actually. That's another thing I'm a little dismayed about with this radio is that it was stored in a damp place, although the case is relatively in good condition. It has a smell of must to it. And I noticed that at one end of it, the veneer uh, was kind of lifting off the top. I, that's all easily fixed. The rust, well, I don't know what to do about that. I, I don't know how much it's going to hurt these transformers if they're good. Um, I'm thinking, I'm not sure if this is a choker. It's the audio transformer. I'll have to investigate that. There's two transformers underneath. There's also another power resistor. I don't see a label on it or if the label fell off, but there's a power resistor on right here. Notice how green it looks. <laughs> That's the bad thing about people that uh, uh, either put the... This big can is a four section capacitor. I'm assuming it's like an electrolytic, although it's not shown that way on the schematic. And these very early radios, <laughs> it's hard to say, but Here's something interesting. This lead here is just wrapped around and there's a big glob of solder there. Somebody's worked on this radio at, at one point before I got it. When that was done I have no idea but this radio has been looked at and worked on. Okay that section of that four section capacitor is 828 ohms shorted to ground. So that capacitor is no good. And the wire that was attached to that section was desoldered. It was just touching it. It was just wrapped on it. <laughs> so whoever worked on this uh, discovered that but didn't seem to go any farther. I don't know why and it looks to me like it was a very long time ago that somebody somebody was dabbling in this radio probably many years ago. But anyways, that capacitor is obviously no good. I would have probably replaced it anyways. But there's a reason I knew there was something wrong uh, in right in that section. And the reason I knew there was something wrong is this power resistor, which does look kind of bad with its green discoloration, supposed to be a thousand ohms. But it was only reading uh, less than 500 ohms. It was 485 ohms, I think. Something like that. So the uh, shorted capacitor was in parallel with it. And now that the capacitor is out of the circuit, you can see that the resistor is reading correct. It is 1,000 ohm. In fact, I think all these uh, big uh, ceramic resistors are still good. But that capacitor is definitely no good. I've disconnected the choke from the, the this big capacitor and it reads about 390 ohms. I'm going to check it to ground and make sure that it uh, it's it's not shorted to ground. 
and uh, in order to do that to disconnect one lead and check it to ground and it is not so I'm assuming that as rusty as that thing looks, it's possibly, very probably, still good. What I'm going to do now is uh, run the power supply up in voltage and see what it does. I assume it's good. I have the tap set for 120 volts. But I'm going to bring it up and watch the current draw, see if I get any voltage out of it and uh, um, that it doesn't smoke or doesn't draw a lot of current. I think that transformer is good. I've already checked this choke and it's not shorted to ground and it's uh, roughly about 400 ohms so uh, 390 I think is what I measured. So I'm assuming that's okay. Uh, I don't know about the uh, audio output transformer yet but I don't see any sign that that transformer cooked or is bad. But I'm just going to touch, uh, right now I'm just going to test the power transformer. Okay, I have my ohmmeter set to reading in the 750 volts AC scale. And I'm connecting it to the uh, uh, B plus, well it would be the uh, supply for the, uh, uh, the rectifier tube, the AC, the high voltage uh, secondary side of the uh, transformer. And I'm all set there. Let me plug this uh, thing into. <laughs> if I can find where the plug is, here's the plug. I'll plug this into my power supply up here. And I have my power supply set to read 0 to 2 amps. So let's uh, bring her up. Let's see what we get. No uh, current draw, but I'm already up to 300 volts AC, 322. Right about there should be full voltage. Let's see. Here's 120 volts, drawing negligible amps, and uh, we have 520 volts uh, AC coming out of the transformer. In my opinion, that transformer is no doubt good. Uh, of course, I'm not checking the 5 volt output for the rectifier. I can do that next, but I brought it up to full power, and it hasn't blown up or smoked or jumped off the bench yet. <laughs> so let's see what we can do from this point. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if I've got the 5 volt filament supply for the uh, 80 tube. We'll power up. four point nine volts right at hundred and twenty volts in that transformer is good folks <laughs> that's one good thing I'm pretty much done analyzing the power supply as rusty as these transformers look and as cruddy as that resistor looks that resistor is good that's right at a thousand ohms like it's supposed to be all the re power resistors in this thing were good. This checks okay. Power transformer is obviously working. I get 5 volts for the uh, the 80 filament. Um, all I basically need to do is replace those uh, four electrolytic capacitors. They're, they're low value. I can replace those. Get a new power cord for it. This one is actually amazingly this power cord could be reused. I could really reuse this power cord. <laughs> I'm almost debating whether or not I should do actually do that. I don't know. But 
I've never seen a power cord this old and in this good a condition. So that's uh, so far the analysis of the power supply of the radio.